ARK Invest says the Tesla share price will reach 2,600 by the year 2029 and they're attributing most of that over, I think 90% of that stock price they project to FSD, to full self-driving. Well, I think they might be right about the stock price, but not because of FSD. I think FSD faces some major hurdles and in this video, you're gonna go into a full analysis what the potential of FSD is and why there might be major problems. Number one, I think we can agree, all of us, on the strategic opportunity of FSD and that it's amazing. Imagine a world where all cars are connected, they are robo taxis, they understand the world and they can drive you anywhere you want. Uber and Lyft are gone. Everything is replaced with Tesla and other companies who do that and the car drives itself. Of course, that would change everything. Dollars per mile, cost per mile goes down dramatically. We don't need drivers anymore. Safety goes through the roof. This is all amazing. We also know that Tesla has a strategic lead in getting into that future through their you know, smarter sensor strategy that they don't use LiDAR, they can be more efficient, they simulate the human brain and the human eyes. It's clear that their sensor strategy is the right one. It's also pretty clear at this point that their AI strategy end-to-end -end neural nets is the right one and that they have a big AI advantage. So in all these respects, I think Tesla has the lead and FSD is a tremendous you know, eight to tri $10 trillion opportunity, maybe even more. Uh, potentially even 15 trillion in my calculation, at least the total market. I think for long-term shareholders in Tesla, it's also pretty safe to bet that Tesla will get there, that FSC will happen, and this tremendous opportunity will be unlocked. Now, of course, the problem is not everyone is a long-term shareholder in the sense that you can just hold Tesla shares, they go nowhere, and you're happy because in five years, they go up you know, 10x. In order to be like that, you need to be basically a private retail investor. But I know many of you are actually professional money managers. Not many, but few of my viewers in this channel. And also, if you just in general think about, you know, the cost of capital, of course, it's much smarter, if you can, to not be fully invested in Tesla, take some other gains in the meantime, while the stock is flat, and jump into the stock when it's about to go up. And I know that might sound stupid to some because you, you know, everyone knows you can't predict short-term short, uh, stock market moves, but you might be able to predict at least medium-term uh, term moves a little better, uh, which means one or two years. So the question this all boils down to is what is going to happen in the next two, three, one, two, three years? And can we make some predictions here? It is crucial to understand if, if time value of money is important to you, do we have to wait another three years before Tesla goes up like a hockey stick or will it be more a linear progression of the stock so it's smart to be in now in terms of FSD? I'm talking only about FSD. Here are some concerns about the tactical implementation and the hard catalysts that drive up the stock that I want to dive a little deeper into. I know a lot of Tesla fans mock Waymo. Waymo is the le leader globally, at least in the US maybe, maybe globally in full self-driving in terms of actual deployment. And we need to be fair to Waymo that they lead the space in, in the sense that they have actually revenue and customers, right? You can discuss the technology, you can argue Tesla is further ahead in terms of the actual full self-driving brain, but Waymo is indisputable ahead in terms of deploying this and charging money for it. So what is Waymo's strategy here? Waymo is ahead of Tesla in terms of operational implementation of a full self-driving robotaxi network. How do they do that? They are doing a geofence. They are not going on highway. They have a strategic intervention team. You know, if a Waymo gets into some kind of problem, a remote guy can jump in and start giving the Waymo car advice, not taking over control, but giving the thing advice. In other um, words, they have figured out a way to make it work in a geofenced limited space. When you are uh, entering a Tesla FSD 12.4, you know, you see it all over YouTube, we are big fans what happens there with the Teslas and what they can do. But the problem is, right, even if it's amazing and mind-blowing how these things drive themselves, it's not enough to just be cool. The question is, how often do you have to make an intervention? And I know people talk about, oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's 10xing every time, every time they have a new uh, version up. But Think about it. If you're alone in a Tesla with no driver as a passenger, this can never happen. 
mistakes are not even a thing that are allowed to happen. You know, when a mistake happens, there's a crash if no one can intervene. So in order um, to get there, you need a whole meta system around the core for self-driving that recognizes a problem, stops the car, you know, shoots a message over to your strategic intervention team that doesn't exist for Tesla. And even if that would be just some tweaking, it's a lot of detailed tweaking here to actually have that, something like this live. And we don't see anything happening at Tesla so far that they start implementing these operational topics, right? That is a little bit of a warning signal for me because it will take years, in my opinion, to even operationally fine-tune these trivial things. Who is the remote team? How do these interventions exactly work? There needs to be a whole very complicated software interface. Say, oh, this Tesla got stuck, this robotaxi. You jump in, you know, it gets attributed to someone on the team. Uh, they then have to tell the car some secret stuff. We don't know exactly how Waymo does it. Um, the car has to recognize there is a problem and somehow slow down and not get into a crash. This is all non-trivial and it's not there yet with Tesla. They didn't even start doing that. And I think, you know, the inflection point for FSD, when it becomes a hard catalyst for the stock price, is when they roll it out, it's live, right? And a real life paid self-driving service is in place. Um, I think it's absolutely clear that you cannot get into a world anytime soon where you don't need geofencing, where you don't need a strategic intervention team. Um, and that is a big problem because we need to see Tesla actually starting to do this. And I know everyone hates geofencing, but you have to think operationally. It, the time is now. If you wait for a hard catalyst of a, for a real rollout, you have to think very operationally, unless FST is perfect and we are truly half a decade away from this thing being flawless, never making a mistake. I think everyone agrees to that. So even if you have one intervention in a million miles, what are you going to do in this one case? You need this all in place. And I think, you know, that's why I have so many concerns. The more I think about when do we get this hard catalyst? When do we get into a situation that they can roll this out? We need to see geofencing. We need to see a strategic intervention team. We need to see some test markets. Um, all of that takes multiple years probably to be really good. Even if Tesla's core brain would be much better than Waymo's, these problems need to be solved. They're independent, independent problems. Let me break it down. What I think the hard catalyst could be that make self-driving a thing that drives the stock. Let's talk about August 8th. What would be a hard catalyst? A hard catalyst would be the announcement of the launch of a test market, paid test market like Las Vegas or Los Angeles or San Francisco, um, and a date. So they need to say, we launch in Nevada or we launch in Las Vegas, uh, you know, March 31st, 2025, and we are opening up a wait list and you can download the app. I think that's the hardest catalyst that will catapult the stock upwards. If we hear medium catalyst, here's a medium catalyst. The medium catalyst would be, okay, you can get on the wait list for the app, um, but we do not announce the exact date of the test market launch. So if they say, here's a wait list, here's the app, you, you get a test market, but we don't, we don't tell you when the actual launch date is. I think that's kind of a medium catalyst between hard and soft that, you know, might keep the stock where it is if it runs up before. Um, but mm, probably doesn't drive it up too much. There would be too much skepticism when this date actually is. And here are soft catalysts for August 8th that I think will not move the stock or drop it um, because we probably see some form of run-up before. If we see a run-up before, I think these soft catalysts will drop the stock if that's all you get. There's not a hard or medium catalyst. What is a soft catalyst? Robotaxi hardware. That's where the fans have to be very cautious, Tesla fans, because they will be so excited and then complain that the stock drops. The stock will drop because hardware is not enough. So amazing Robotaxi announced and shown, not helping. Uh, you know, pilot drives and example drives, not helping. Um, general statements and plans about progress, soft catalyst, not helping. 
um, basically anything that Tesla shows that is robotaxi related, that is not the announcement of a test market and a date and a wait list, or at least a wait list with a test market with no date, will lead to a drop of stock if there is a run up before 8.8. I think you get my point. I think I'm skeptical about FST. I think the bottom line is it's actually short term overhyped as a catalyst for the stock, not in its strategic potential, unless we see something like this coming up. And if a hard catalyst is coming up, you can be sure that Tesla has geofencing strategies, of course, that they have a strategic intervention team starting to build out. I'm not saying this is not going to happen. I think it could happen. I just have my doubts that, you know, this is going to happen on 8.8, but it might. If not, we will see the stock drop. I am actually unsure about this whole situation. I'm not betting on FSD as a short term or even 12 months catalyst, hard catalyst. We could have to wait for this for multiple years, um, but we can't exclude. Of course, I would never short Tesla. You never know what's going to happen and it might come earlier. I want you to comment and let me know what you think. If you have any intel on what's going on, be disciplined in your thinking and observation. If you have any intel that you think a hard catalyst is coming, uh, let us know, right? There's a lot of cool YouTube channels uh, discussing that. Let me see, uh, let me know what you think and see. Um, and then one last comment before we wrap it up. There's a new video coming, an additional video on Optimus. And while I'm becoming more skeptical about short-term catalysts for FSD, the more I thought about it and analyzed the whole situation, the more I think Optimus is the true revolution here. Because Optimus, we are talking about a market much, much larger, much larger than FSD, much more dramatically transforming humanity. And here's the most important thing, much easier to launch. The hurdles for Optimus to actually become a revenue stream and actually start to scale are so much easier and so much lower than FSD. So you're having a much larger market. You're talking about 25 trillion and up and then unlimited in my opinion. I will explain this in the next video. And it's shockingly easy to unlock this and we might be shockingly close, much closer than people think for humanoid robots at scale. The more I think about it, the more likely it is that Optimus just passes by FSD and makes FSD a side note in history. Ark is right, FSD will add thousands of dollars to the share price, but it might be marginal compared to Optimus and it might happen much later. So I hope you follow me here on the channel, subscribe and wait for the Optimus video. I think that will be a very important one. And the more I analyze the market, the more it becomes clear we might enter a phase of ridiculous growth.